I'd like to thank everybody for coming out on the Lord Saturday day. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, of our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We'll get, we'll get to this lesson, I'll tell you the title, The Chosen Ones and God's Doctrine. The Chosen Ones and God's Doctrine. But today, today, if you really look at it in the world today, it's sad because God chose a people to carry this doctrine or to his word to teach the nation. But the nation has taught his people. And it's real sad to see our people just kill themselves and most of all, everybody, everybody else killing them too. And we have more and more black on black crime than we have white on black crime today, but most people don't look at that per se. But in this lesson, I want to just try to get y'all to understand that you've chosen as a nation of people to do a job. And the job is to spread this doctrine. But when you look out in the world today, the people are just, I guess I just can't stress the sadness of just the world attacking us, then we attacking ourselves, and most of all, we don't care to know. At all. We don't care to know. They think, well, if everybody doing it, well, I go ahead and do it too. So God just got to choose between the less of the one that's doing the evil. God don't work like that. I'm telling you, don't work like that. It's not a job. It's not a, you're not going against people to get into his kingdom. You're going against his book. No matter how bad the world looks, you still gonna be judged by this book. He ain't gonna say, well, they doing bad over there. Or they doing worse than these other people. No, he look at you like, okay, let me see what Jeff did according to these laws. I don't care how bad the world doing, that's on them, they going to the lake of fire. But he gonna judge me and see, well, let me see, if, can I place him in my kingdom off his laws. So don't get, don't get, um, don't get misunderstood out there in the world or don't just follow people because it's fun. Y'all see it in the world today. You see it today. And the stuff going on. Our people, which are the Israelites, the chosen ones to carry God's word, are the biggest sinners on this Sabbath day. The biggest sinners. The biggest sinners. So we're going to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. I thank God that I had an opportunity to know this. Because if I didn't know this, my kids and my, my wife and kids would know it. And then if I never grasped hold of this, guess what? We'll be in the lake of fire together and they look at me. Why you ain't tell us? Why you ain't give us a why you ain't teach us? And that's what you have to do as a nation. You got to teach your family, especially the little ones, so they can grow into this thing because you look out there in the world, there ain't very much truth out there at all. And stop looking for a great number of people just to come to a church that's, speak, that's preaching the truth. It's very small. Very small. God chose us. Anyway, God chose us not because we was big in numbers. We were the smallest people all in the life at numbers, meaning that we didn't have very many people in our nation. He chose us. All the other nations had more people in their nation. But he looked down and said, I'm going to choose Israel. I'm going to choose Abraham's seed. That's, that's a good thing to always keep in mind. This scripture is going to tell you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. We're going to read 1 and 2. We're going to jump to 6. Go ahead, brother. When the Lord God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Gergesites, uh -huh. and the Amorites and the Canaanites, and the Persians and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. To move with it to the land where God brought us out of Egypt, he took us into the land. He was going to take us in the land into, well, this is a time when we, 
This time he's going to take us in the land. He told us, once we go to possess the land of Israel, there are going to be greater nations in that land. So don't worry about it. I'm with you. We're not going to be bigger than they are in numbers. So, but I want you to go over there and take the land. They're going to follow because I'm ahead of you. You my chosen ones. But go ahead, brother. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. See, we want us to go over there to that land. Don't make no covenant with them. Don't go over there and make a covenant of Christmas with them, a covenant of Thanksgiving with them, a covenant of birthdays, Easter, all this stuff. I'm just giving you layman terms today. Same thing going on today. Don't make no covenant with them. Don't join yourself to them. He wants you to destroy. At this time, he wants them to destroy. Mm -hmm. But we, only way we're going to destroy people today is by our doctrine, the teaching, the word of God. But he chose us. Mm -hmm. Jump out of verse 6. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he chose thee to be a special people above all people. Israel. He chose us to be special. But the thing is, today, people have forgot that. And God has forgotten us. He don't deal with you because you just is real. Say, he's going to protect you because you is real. He deal with you because you're in a covenant with him. You follow his laws and statutes. He said, okay, I'm going to protect him. Well, go ahead. The Lord did not set his love upon you, not choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for he were the fewest of all people. See what I'm saying? We were the fewest of all people. He didn't choose us because we had a great number. So that should let you know, because it's a big crowd, that don't mean God now. Most people think because, oh man, they got a lot of people at that church. They go over there and have fun with them. They must be praising the Lord right. And that's what is really so simple-minded. People so simple-minded think that. Because you got a lot of people, that means God's over there in that church. That's the last place you be at. He's the straightest to gaze, and very few will find. Yes. But that road to destruction, all of them are. Many. many. So many. That's right. But go ahead. Verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. Yes, sir. And redeemed you out of the house of bondsmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Go ahead. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is what it is. He loves you because you keep his commandments. We keep him one today. Honoring the Lord Sabbath day. And it's, re that's, it's real important to him. Real important. God created the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh he rested. And he hadn't even created a man yet. That's right. No man was there to till the ground. Amen. So you're going to try to tell me that this day is not special. God will deal away with that. And this is the issue we have right now. Mm -hmm. Just understand who is God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. We are. The Israelites, the so-called Negroes are all over the world. It's not saying that we're special and God has only just saved us. That's right. No, that's not. We're not talking about. It. He have a he have a leading group that's supposed to teach the nation to show them salvation, and that's our job. But the world had taught us about their God, about the God of Constantine, mm -hmm. which is sun worship. That's right. He taught us. They taught us that. That's why most people go into church on Sunday. Go do some research and understand that 321 A.D. Emperor Constantine written wrote a law stating that. If you don't worship on the Sunday, you will be killed. You will be killed. If he found you not worship on the Sunday, you still will be killed. But he converted a lot of people to some worship out, out of fear. 
But people don't take time with the research stuff. We're looking at the chosen people. Let's go to Psalms 147 and verse 19. And that's what people don't understand. God ain't dealt with no other nation but us. What I mean by that, he gave us the power to carry this word out. Have you ever noticed, can't nobody preach like Israel? Have you ever noticed? Can't nobody draw a cry like Israel. I don't care if you're preaching, rapping, singing, or anything. He put that in us. But the Gentiles have figured it out. He said, look, we can't let them know who they are. Because if they know the real plan, they'll take over this world. We are, we are already faster, stronger, bigger, smarter. We, we created everything in the world just about. We invented the majority of stuff in the world. Everything. Only thing they did was they capitalized on it. And that's what we got to understand. The only thing that's going to save you and I is our knowledge of this book. But listen to what he say right here. The chosen one. He chose Israel. Psalms 147, verse 19. Go ahead, bro. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. That's Jacob our father. He had 12 sons, which is the 12 tribe of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes all over the world. These are, this is what he's talking about. He showed them to Jacob and Israel, his son. Go ahead. He has not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they are not known them. He said, he said, I ain't dealt with no other nation but y'all. And that's how it was in the beginning. The Gentiles couldn't get salvation back in the day. But because of what our, because of what we did wrong, he opened that door up for. And most people don't understand that. If you don't come by Israel, you ain't getting no salvation. If we don't teach it, you ain't getting no salvation. We got to teach it. And that's what it seems strange because the Israelites in the world, don't nobody look at us as being nothing. If we don't look at us, they look at us as the bottom of the totem pole. Go ahead and tell somebody you, 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 you the Israelite. They'll laugh at you. Why? Because we can put a stigma or mark on, on our people by all this destruction, killing each other, acting a fool, doing all this crazy stuff. But he only dealt with us back then, y'all. And still dealing with us today. We just got a very, very small remnant. Let's keep moving. Let's go to Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. Why is, the, why is the Israelites God chose? Why did he choose us? And what reason he chose us? And we got to understand that. He gave us something. Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. But understand that. This is Paul talking. Go ahead, brother. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother, uh -huh. my kinsman according to the flesh. To understand that Paul was an Israelite too. Don't let, you have so many people in the world, they call they say Paul was a Gentile. I don't even know Gentile. Gentile are the so-called white people. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. <coughs> Go ahead. For I could wish. Verse 4. Uh, verse 4, I'm sorry. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Who are the adoption? Who are Israelites? He adopted us. Remember we, we read in Deuteronomy 7, he said, I chose you, not because of Sai. I chose you because of uh, he I, this one he explained, I adopted you. He looked down there and seen Abraham and his seed. And he chose him. He said, and the covenants and giving of the law. Meaning that we got the covenant and we supposed to give the law to the nation. Not the nation give us their law. And he said, the service of God. We got to do the service of God. Work. Talking to people, ministering, reading these words, telling people what thus saith the Lord. You got a big job. 
And believe me, you need to get knowledgeable of your job because people are going to start asking us in these last days. Go ahead. Verse 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom that's concerning the flesh Christ came? Even Christ came as an Israelite. The God of Israel, he came through the blood of David, through the tribe of Judah. And you're going to tell me that what them Jews do and what we are, the Christian, we do Israel. Y'all try to separate this stuff. Ain't no separation. It's a dictatorship. If it don't come by Israel, it don't come, there comes no salvation. And he said, whose fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh of Christ came. The flesh, he's talking about what he had, his body, what it looked like. He said, who is over all? God bless forever. Amen. Let's see what tribe Jesus came from. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. So you got to understand that you got so many people out there that are going to try to separate too. That's what them Jews do. Jesus was a Jew. What you talking about? He's a Jew. I'm telling this, this Israelite, he's, he went crazy. He went mad. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Go ahead, bro. But it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Who sprang out of Judah? Our Lord Jesus Christ. He came from the tribe of Judah, an Israelite. That's why he said the flesh. I'm saying that. But you're going to try to separate the two? These are the chosen people. He chose his only begotten son, which is God the Father, to come through the tribe of Judah. And a lot, of, a lot of people think that Jesus just came from Mary. Jesus been here from the beginning. He had all of his word. That's why he came through the tribe of Judah. He chose these people, a royal priesthood, to do a job. What we supposed to be doing today. And most of all, teaching doctrine. This is what we supposed to be doing. Let's go to Matthews. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. We understand about this doctrine that God gave the chosen people. Believe me, like I keep telling y'all, if it don't come by Israel, it's not going to come. Salvation will not come by any other nation unless they learn it from us. It's not going to come. Now, in those nations, if they teach you what the Israelites say, yeah, you get salvation then. But it got to come from us. I saw the title as we've been less than something else, but I ain't want to title that way and throw y'all off. But I ain't gonna get in that. Had to change the title. God really adamant about this nation. He's the apple of his eye. He loves us a whole lot. You know how it is when we love somebody so much. You also can hurt them a lot too. Ask a jealous husband about it or a jealous wife. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. Let's look at some here. And see how much Jesus loved Israel. Verse 21, go ahead. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sodom. Uh -huh. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thy son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Uh -huh. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and saw him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. See, one thing about it, Israel didn't deal with other nations back then not at all. They didn't care nothing about you, period. Go ahead. 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she. See what he said? He said, I am not sent 
but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's how much Jesus loved him. He said, Lord, I'm sick. I came to you and you only at this time. He told him, I didn't even go in the ways of the Gentiles. I don't even worry about them. That's why I focus my time teaching y'all, Israelites, black people, so called black people. Because this is the protocol. If the other nations get it, they get it. But I ain't spending my time on the other nations. I'm spending my time on Israel. Go ahead. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. She begged, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Look what Jesus said to her. Go ahead. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. He like, I ain't giving the bread of the children to cast it to you, dog. He called her a dog. This is how serious it was, huh? This doctrine was serious. And uh, this, this nation, God uh, chose over all nations. Go ahead. And she said, True. Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the, their master's table. She came at Jesus a different way. She was like, hey, Yeah, Lord, I understand what you're saying. You're giving this doctrine to the end. But at least the crumbs trim around from the table, then the dog gets some. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thy will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That's the only way she got, got what she needed. She had to come on to Israel. She had to follow what he said. She knew, she knew who to go to. Went to Jesus. They're like, man, don't be giving out, don't get a doctor to that dog over there. But well, that's not to tear down the other races, but if you ain't by God, you like a dog. You know what I mean? You, God tell you, he said, don't cast your prayer before swine. He look at you like swine. You're not following the nation of Israel. These are the chosen people. Let's continue. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. Let's see what Jesus told the disciples. We just understand the chosen one and their doctrine. We understand that. Matthew 10 and verse 5. We get it. Go ahead. These, Go ahead. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. He told them not even go in the way of the Gentiles. Don't even go in no way. Pay attention now. Don't get distracted. He said, go not in the way of the Gentiles. Meaning that these other nations, y'all don't even fool with these nations. Don't even fool with these nations. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go where? To the lost sheep of Israel first. That's who you're supposed to go to. Go ahead. And as ye go, Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you understand this. I wonder why, I'm like, oh, why Jesus said not to go in the ways of the Gentiles. See, Jesus knows all and everything. Go not this way because they're going to persuade you to do wrong. You know this Israelite. don't take but much to throw them off. They're going to mind that part of them right now. It don't take much. And most people got their minds on this stuff. You got to be strong in the thing. Because if you ain't strong in this, in this doctrine, anybody can come up to you and tell you anything. You know Jesus changed Saturday. How did you ever know that Saturday was Saturday? It could be a floating Saturday. It could be any kind of Saturday. You just choose your Saturday. How do you know this? And people so simple-minded, yeah, you, you might be right. <laughs> just that quick. That man, that man and woman will trick you out your salvation, take you to lake of fire with them. Believe me, if this ain't right, I'm going to die doing it. I'm going to die doing it because on the other side of this, hey, you can't get out that late. Understand that. Let's continue. Let's go see why he said go not in the way of the Gentile. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. Understand that. There's a reason for that. It's all here in the book. Jesus knows these men better than they know themselves. 
First Corinthians chapter 10. We'll start with verse 20. This is the reason why he said, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. Go ahead, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. <clears throat> and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. He don't want you to fellowship with them devils. What are they sacrificing? They sacrifice, every time they get together, they're going to sacrifice some swine. Every time they get together, they're going to sacrifice to another god. Every time, they're not going to sacrifice to the god of Israel or the doctrine of Israel at all. Go ahead, this is what the Lord said. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't do both. I don't care who you are, you try to you fool yourself thinking that, okay, I'm going to play over here with, with, with Israel or with Jephthah for a little while, then I'm going to go back over here on the other side and play with my wife or my husband and their family and do all this bad doctrine, go to the family reunion on the Sabbath day, or, or, or go out there to a football game on the Sabbath day. I'm talking about stuff that you can control. When you talk about stuff you can't control. I'm um, saying some situation that you put in, you got to provide for family. Every man got to work out his own salvation when you're talking about that work. But anyway, like I said, you cannot serve two tables or two cups. You can't. can't it's hard. Yes. Because you're going to mess around and mess yourself up mentally and physically in that lake of fire. That's why he said, go not in the way of Gentile, Gentile because they sacrifice the devils. What y'all doing on Easter? <laughs> I got hot in the heads. You sacrifice to the devil. Or the God of Sestate. You sacrifice to the earth, to moves and all that. Do your history. We finished with that? Go ahead. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Or are we stronger than he? He said, do we provoke him? I'm telling you, God is a very, very jealous God. Like I said, he's more jealous than a jealous husband of his wife. He's more jealous than a jealous wife to her husband. Mm -hmm. And we know what jealous people do. They kill folk. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is. Don't, don't, don't try to look at God like he just man, like he man. I'm just giving you an example. He can hurt you perfectly. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22. All of, all of it here. Let me show you what these cats are doing, how they're sacrificing the devils. These are the chosen people, believe me. When you start telling people the doctrine, like I said, the chosen one and God's doctrine, when you start telling them that, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. I ain't going away from here with that, man. Go on now, you bring my spirit down. I was happy before you came over here. Yeah, right. You have to all in that sin. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 25. Go ahead. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey. Uh -huh. They have devised souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. He said there's a conspiracy, like something right. It ain't right at all when you're not going the way God say read this Bible every Sabbath and make sure that you follow the doctrine. He said of oh, our prophets, meaning the preachers, the one, the Israelites won't be preaching the doctrine. You're doing something wrong. You follow somebody else. Let me show you how they follow somebody else. They follow them Gentile. Go ahead. The priests have violated my law uh -huh. and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane, profane among them. See what he said? They hid their eyes from the Sabbath. And they put no difference between the clean and unclean. The fool, they ain't put no difference between that. Oh, Jeff, I'm hungry, man. God the bless it, Father. Bless this food we're about to receive. You got a whole rack of uh, ribs on the table. 
you got all this seafood, shrimp, crab, and all this stuff on the table. I mean, one time they tried to tell me, I got to get on my family, go ahead, when your time, you go bless the food. I said, man, I can't bless that. <laughs> we was out eating at a restaurant. I ain't finna pray over that. Go ahead, man. I told my brother, go ahead. I ain't dealing with that. I just looked at them like they were crazy and just kept on doing what I was doing. Eating clean food. See, what they do, they hide their eyes from God's Sabbath. Like we see outside there. They got this big thing going on the Sabbath day. That distract them for our people. And I